Think about pharmacology like keys and locks. The key being like a drug, the receptor being like the lock, the place where the key interacts. And then once the key interacts with the lock, there's a change in the regulatory function. Usually when we talk about pharmacology and drugs and receptors and change in regulatory functions, we'll talk a lot about receptors that are membrane-bound proteins where a drug from outside of the cell will activate a receptor and cause a regulatory change inside of the cell. So here a drug is activating a receptor, which is a membrane-bound protein in this cartoon. And when the drug interacts with the receptor, it causes a change inside of the cell. In this case, we're taking any chemical, denoted as a square, and converting that into the triangle chemical, so that there's a buildup of that chemical inside of the cell. And so this is part of the natural regulatory function of a cell, whether this drug comes from outside of the body or this drug is a hormone made inside of the body. Pharmacology is the study of substances that interact with living systems through chemical processes. Especially by binding to regulatory molecules like proteins, and either activating, as in turning on, or inhibiting, turning off normal body processes. In this class, pharmacology is not memorizing long lists of medications or drugs. We're not really interested in what the drug company's latest advertising and marketing campaigns are. This course intends to teach you about how medications are used to treat and prevent illness but also to reveal the beauty and complexity of living regulatory systems. Some of the definitions that you'll see in this pharmacology course are different than your understanding of the definition from the way it's used in the public. So a drug is any substance, keyword any substance, that interacts with a molecule or a protein that plays a regulatory role in living systems. So drugs must have specificity. Just like locks and keys, a key to fit in a lock has to have a certain shape and a certain size to fit in that lock. A specific key will only fit with its specific lock. Drugs must be a specific size, charge, and shape to interact with a given receptor. A receptor is a specific molecule, usually a protein, that interacts with a specific drug that then causes a change in the receptor, causing a change in regulatory function. It is the receptors that are responsible for the selectivity of drug action. And think about locks and keys. If you take your car key and you put it in the door, it opens the door. If you take the same car key and put it in the trunk, it opens the trunk. If you take the same key and put it in the ignition, it starts the car. So it's not the key that determines what happens, it's the lock that determines what happens. And the same thing happens in pharmacology. It's the receptor that determines what the drug does, and that's an important concept to remember when we talk about the many effects of drugs. Medical pharmacology is the science of substances used to prevent, diagnose, and treat disease. And that's really what we're going to talk mostly about this semester. We'll talk about plenty of basic concepts in pharmacology, but a lot of what we're going to talk about is medical pharmacology because we're learning pharmacology to help prevent, diagnose, and treat disease. A medication is a drug intended for a therapeutic benefit, and we'll make that point again later. Toxicology is a branch of pharmacology. It studies the harmful effects of chemicals on living systems. So poisons are drugs that have almost exclusively harmful effects. This definition of toxins is a little bit different than the definition that you may be used to. Toxins in a pharmacology course are poisons of biologic origin usually synthesized by plants or animals. 
Indo inside genus, as in Genesis, to form from the beginning. Endogenous substances are made inside of the body. Exogenous substances are made outside of the body the body. And this is an important concept to understand. Like adrenaline, epinephrine. Your body makes epinephrine, so we would consider the epinephrine that your body makes to be endogenous epinephrine or endogenous adrenaline. But we can synthesize the exact same molecule in a factory and use it as a drug as well, and that would be considered an exogenous substance made outside of the body. This term is a little bit different than what you may be used to. Hormones are quite simply endogenous drugs. The chemical signals that your body uses to affect its regulatory systems, they are all called hormones. Well, here's a term I don't think I ever used until I started teaching a pharmacology course. Xenobiotics are exogenous drugs. These are chemicals that are made outside of the body that interact with living regulatory systems inside the body. Pharmacodynamics is the actions of drug on the body. Take, for instance, propranolol. Propranolol is a beta blocker. It's a beta adrenergic antagonist. It lowers blood pressure and lowers heart rate. That's the action of propranolol on the body. Pharmacokinetics are the actions of the body on the drug. Propranolol is metabolized and eliminated by both the liver and the kidneys. This is what the body does to the drug, and this is what the drug does to the body. So it's very important to know the difference between dynamics and kinetics.